things it's somewhat walkable now um, when developments come into town uh, we, we look at uh, uh, making sure that we have sidewalks in place that would be more walkable um, I've talked to some you know it's you, you work with the, the developers that come in on making their areas more walkable and connecting to everywhere in the city. Uh, as far as levels of service, we're talking about our wastewater treatment facility. Those are all things that are already in the process. Um, I'm not coming in here as Ben McCarty to say, hey, I'm changing everything. I love Alachua. Most of the citizens of Alachua, uh, love Alachua that live here now, and if they don't, they probably shouldn't be here. They don't really like it. Um, but it's a good life community. I'm happy with the direction the city is going with a little bit of tweaks and changes here and there. I'm happy with it. So I'm, I'm comfortable with the, the process now and this, for the ERA process, I'm comfortable with what we're doing in the city to move toward that. I was at with the Planning and Zoning Board when we looked at that and brought those issues up and I'm comfortable where we're, where we're going right now. Okay. Mr. Kent. Um, I think these are very important issues to address, and I'm glad they're coming up with the EAR process. Um, I think I think there needs to be more uh, more public discussion about these things. I think people need to be more informed, and there need to be workshops. There need to be public discussions about these as we move forward, because these are issues we're having a lull right now. Uh, I think what, what would be useful if someone could prepare a PowerPoint presentation and show all of the developments that have been approved in Alachua in the last three years that haven't been built yet and, and, and put all of that in place and try to imagine the traffic, for example, that would be here if they were all built now. Because you know we're dealing with a situation here where all of our schools are on truck routes. We don't really have a, a, a plan in place if the trucks traffic right now was double in Alachua, um, I think we'd be looking at some serious traffic issues. So when you say walkability, pedestrian friendly, well, we need crosswalks. We need crosswalks on this roadway right here. This current fiscal situation, basically what is your um, resources do you have as far as understanding the fiscal situation and what would you do about it? And I believe the last question was Mr. Mr. Kenny, so Mr. Bakari will start that. What skills? Yeah, you started. Oh, Mr. Canny, thank you. <laughs> Reading the no questions problem. too much. Good. What skills do you bring as far as fiscal understanding of the situation, fiscal issues? Well, I think we have a very competent staff to deal with the, you know, the technical issues of the financial situation. The problem is the direction. Uh, you know, you you, you have you only. Uh, it, it, what what I would bring is common sense and a commitment to to look out for the public interest and and to uh, develop a forward-looking um, approach to budgeting that doesn't assume a growth curve that may not happen. See, I think part of the problem with finances is if you, one of the things that's been going on has been spending as if everything is gonna keep going in a certain direction. And so now, we, now there's time for a readjustment. It's happening all over the place, not just a lot to it. So I would say common sense and, and a commitment to the public interest and looking out for the public's money and, and spending wisely and frugally and uh, not, not counting your chickens before they're hatched. Mr. Bocard. The um, experience that I'm gonna bring uh, when it comes to this is uh, gonna be my, my bills, the bills I pay. Um, when you look at the city of Alachua, we've gotta make sure that um, the citizens want a level of service and we gotta make sure we provide that level of service um, but we got to make sure we do it responsibly. Once again, if we, if, we, we, if we tighten our own wallets and our own budgets are smaller right now because of the economy, then I would agree that the city of Alachua would need to make sure we do the same thing. Not to insinuate that Alachua is having a free-for-all spending. Um, I think what that comes up would have to do with attorney fees and expenses. So, um, and once again, I'll wait to see if we can address that at some point if somebody asks a question um but that's the issue where we're having money right now and while i've got time why don't i say it the city of alachua uh currently uh, mr candy is involved with a lawsuit against the city of alachua right now uh suing the city over um i guess public records and uh, the consent agenda which was an item that we talked about a moment ago uh, his group over the last three years has cost the city or himself actually has been involved in three lawsuits over the last three and a half years that have cost us over $250,000. Um, and it's to protect the rights of the citizens, so I hear. It's a crime against democracy. You're not protecting anybody, you're hurting the citizens of Alachua. Suing commissioner, city managers, and city officials is hurting 
the citizens. And uh, I, I believe that uh, we need to work on. Excuse me. I'll just clarify something. Thank you. We need to make sure that uh, you know, as as a commissioner, that I'm going to make sure that our our commission that our uh, city hall operates in the sunshine as the commissioner should that public records are given as they should I agree with all that uh, and the citizen should have input and be allowed to speak within the law um, but as, as far as um, fiscal my experience that's what the question was I pay bills I know what it's cost what it's costing I know our time right now and I'll do my best to to make sure life to is uh, holding on to its budget as well thank you uh, the next question is one that had been asked in the previous uh, group, but um, they wanted to ask again, and I think you might have touched on this. W uh, what is your position on the Super Walmart in Alaska? Is that me first this time? Um, yeah. Yes. You first. Yeah. Thank you. I'll take that one. <laughs> um, the Super Walmart, I'll make no secret that I am. Um, for the Super Walmart coming to Alachua. I said it earlier, I'm for self-sustainability. I think the Super Walmart's gonna do a, a, a good job um, uh, helping us achieve that. One of the things, though, that we get stuck on is it's Walmart, Walmart, Walmart. I don't care if it's Walmart <coughs> or Target. It's retail. It's something that can... How many people pass through Alachua now, okay? And they go, notice I said pass. They don't stop. They stop here to get on the weekends or every now and then to get some gas. How about those citizens from High Springs, from Newberry, from maybe Fort White area that go to Gainesville to work, or those citizens that work in Gainesville that live here can come home and say, well, I'm not going to stop by Walmart on the way home, or Publix, they can come here to Alachua and spend their dollars here. We need to offer business here in Alachua that will help our, uh, our, our community, our citizens, where they need help. Um, having a place to go at midnight or one or two in the morning when you have to buy something. You've got a lot of workers at Dollar General who work the late night shift, who work overnight. This is going to provide jobs to Elijah, to achieve self-sustainability, and I am one, uh, I will say I am for retail coming to Elijah. Thank you. Mr. Kenny. Yes, um, well, I, I think part of the problem with this question is that it's it, it, it sets us up as being for or against Walmart when really what we need to talk about but I, I like this idea of self-sustainability people don't want to have to drive to Gainesville to shop but I would say that um, well first of all whether there is a Walmart Supercenter built on the location that they've chosen or not is still up in the air if it is built what I would do is I would ensure that the city the city is protected in terms of the services that we need to provide in terms of the traffic I would ensure that uh, that we did the best that we could to mitigate the, the the pollution aspects of the runoff and all of that as I said I would consult with Wes Skiles about a design for for that that would be superior to these uh, these these big uh, stormwater basins that with a fence around it I think that's that's ugly and it's not that workable. But I would say um, Walmart, there, there are many uh, communities of our size that have big box ordinances. And there are many communities that are thriving business communities that have big box ordinances. And what they're not, what they're saying is, they're not saying we don't want retail. They're not saying we don't want shopping opportunities, we don't want jobs, we don't want development. What they're saying is that the scale has to match the economy of where you are and there are there are situations where small economies small towns have have suffered economically net in, in terms of their, their net well-being when a big box came to town it doesn't always have have a net benefit so I think it has to be looked at I would prefer to have a big box ordinance and scale the businesses that come to Alachua <laughs> to our economy and and not necessarily bring in uh, super stores but <coughs> That's, uh, that's an issue for really that the public should decide. I shouldn't be deciding that as a commissioner. The public should uh, have something to say about that. All right. Uh, then this question will be for Mr. Canning. What is your opinion of annexing more property into the city of Alachua? Well, the city of Alachua now, I'm not quite sure. It's somewhere 43, 45 square miles. Um, I'm, I'm not clear on exactly, but I know